Welcome back to Commodities. We are keeping a close eye on crude oil prices after their very substantial and fast comeback from the depth of the mid-60s where the Omicron variant of the coronavirus had put WTI in particular in the later part of last year. Now we're seeing optimism come back to the market, but it's fighting up against these dis supply disruptions and concerns that even open OPEC isn't able to put its output where its mouth is in terms of increased productions. Let's try and make sense of all this with Bill Baruch. He is the president of Blue Line Futures and he joins us now. Bill, what are you using to navigate the oil markets these days? It seems like, you know, trying to, uh, particularly on the demand side, try and predict where that's going to go is really just throwing some spaghetti at the wall. Yeah, you know, thanks for having me on here on Monday. Um, it, it, we're, we're using the same process that, that we use with everything, and it's really sort of this top-down approach. Fundamentals, what, what's going on in the, in the markets there for oil specifically, what, what is the policy in the U.S., as well as OPEC and around the world, and, and where, where's the, uh, the, the path of demand moving? Um, that right there, I mean, that's gotten us bullish for quite a while. I, and I really going back to to the 2020 elections, we something that we, we felt was going to be a tailwind was the U.S. policy um, you know, that, that uh, would really sort of hamper U.S. production and and um, and then the policy from around the world that that is moving and shifting more green without any, um, you know, safety plan on, uh, on 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 the need for oil that isn't going to go anywhere so um, that right there has got to continue to keep us bullish coming out of the of, out of the 20 the, the mid 2020 pandemic time um, but then working down to technicals and, and the market is very very technical too so um, we've been extremely bullish but right now we do not have a position on any underlying futures or it haven't recommended anything for our clients at this moment our second tier upside was $80.15 in the front month contract, and that was achieved last week. So we've advised our clients in, in some of the trading that we're doing and just, just to watch a few rounds here. There's going to be some attractive value into $77.40, uh, but we, we could easily go as low as $75. Um, and then fundamentally, you know, where, where are we going here for, you know, I spoke with the previous fundamentals, what set this landscape, but I think we have a big tailwind with uh, with, with coming out of the pandemic, peak pandemic right here, and then look at the U.S. Uh, crude oil stocks well below the five-year range, and I, I think that's going to be, continue to be a tailwind. And as you mentioned, these OPEC plus countries, only two of them have been able to, to meet supply uh, levels that were, were before the pandemic. So I think we have a lot of bullish fundamentals, and um, you know, the technical landscape is, is very favorable at the moment. It's a good breakdown of the crude oil market. I want to ask you about your view on metals as well, given that we've seen this real rout over the last several sessions in the NASDAQ tech stocks, of course, seemingly finally responding anyway to a rising interest rate environment and how that's not all that great for the tech sector, at least as far as those sky high valuations are concerned. But we're not seeing that usual flight to safety with going to gold or even the new flight to safety in terms of Bitcoin. We're seeing gold down we're seeing Bitcoin down what is it that might bring these commodities up of course we know Bitcoin is being hit by that internet outage in Kazakhstan well you there are I mean gold gold hasn't been a true safe haven I don't think Bitcoin is a safe haven at all you know Bitcoin is has proven to be an inflation mm. hedge um, leading indicator into inflation and and, and you know excess liquidity um, but when it comes to gold right here, I think there's a very interesting dynamic where, where gold gold's actually tightening up this range, you know, lower end of, of the range more recently, 1780. Obviously, it's been down to 1750, but then the upside, 1830, and it hasn't been able to get out above there. Um, key drivers in gold are, are what's going on in the Treasury market as well as in the currency complex. And, and for, for the Treasury market right now, as you mentioned, yields are rising, 10 years approaching, you're hitting 1.8% here today. And rising yields have have hurt gold for the for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the, the cost to carry, but also it, as U.S. rates rally or U.S. rates rise, it, it does encourage uh, flows into the U.S. dollar, and that that rising pushing the currency to strengthen would also be uh, a headwind for gold as gold is priced in dollars.
dollars. One of the interesting dynamics right now is, is you do have the German 10-year yield approaching zero uh, percent. It's been in negative territory really since since 2019, May 2019, and reapproaching this zero percent um, could become very interesting dynamic in the sense that it could encourage money flows from the U.S. into Europe, strengthening the euro. And, and therefore, I think gold can actually regain some inflation hedge tailwinds uh, in, in that sense, um, something we, we, we've only seen very, very little of. Uh, there was a CPI number two months ago where, where gold did surge on. That was a hot number. But uh, overall, those hot CPI numbers have been a headwind for gold because it strengthens the dollar and it, and it boosts rates two headwinds. So I, I think this dynamic could lay a good groundwork in the coming months for gold. And then on top of that, uh, managed money net longs are very, very under positioned um, to gold and, and within gold right now. And, and that it tells me that if gold does start to boogie and it moves higher, you would have a lot of money chasing gold higher. And that that right there, I, I think, is a very interesting dynamic when you, when you think of it all.